On the 28th day of October, Halloween gave to me 28 Whispering Walls, 27 Slugs of Slinking, 26 Hot Dog Ghosts, 25 Hitchhiking Ghouls, 24 Soggy Corpses, 23 Shadow Creeping, 22 Egyptian Eyeballs, 21 Acid Raves, 20 Creepy Stalkers, 19 Kiernan's Time Traveling, 18 Zombie Swatting, 17 Kegner Screeching, 16 Flying Engines, 15 Workplace Accidents, 14 Logs of Bouncing, 13 Planes Exploding, 12 Zombie Soldiers, 11 Angels Wrestling, 10 Ghostly Hitchhikers, 9 Basement Clowns, 8 Vampire Cruises, 7 Silent Heroes, 6 Prequel Bloodstones, 5 Diabolical Fledglings, 4 Vampire Pianists, 3 Dead Professors, 2 Michelle Actresses, and a Radu drooling something bloody. Hey everyone, welcome to the, uh, would you believe it, 28th day of the 31 days of October. That's right, only four movies left. That seems criminal, if you ask me. Uh, we ought to have another 31 days, that's what I say. Anyway, we are talking about uh, one of the more recent movies on this list, on this year's list. And it is a movie called Cobweb, uh, directed by Samuel Bowden and written by Chris Thomas Devlin. Uh, Samuel Bowden, uh, has done, uh, you know, some short films and that kind of thing. Uh, a movie called Tank, a miniseries called Tank. I don't know anything about that. Also did the series Marianne, I think for Netflix, which I haven't seen, but now feel like I need to. Uh, and then there is Chris Thomas Devlin, who is known for writing that terrible Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. That came out on Netflix, speaking of. And uh, and that that's it. It was that movie and then this one. One of them is substantially better. And uh, it is not the sunflower-infused Texas Chainsaw Massacre from uh, a year or two ago. And the thing about Cobweb, and I'm, I'm going to try to talk around some of it because the less you know about it, the more fun it is. So I'm going to give you the broad strokes here. There is a little kid by the name of uh, Peter who lives with his parents, played by Lizzie Kaplan, uh, who you may know from Masters of Sex or Party Down. I don't know that she's done a lot of horror work prior to this, but uh, she is quite good in this. And the father is played by Anthony Starr, who is Homelander in, uh, in that Amazon Prime uh, superhero series uh, where all the superheroes are, are bad and whatnot. And he is very good in that, very menacing in that, and comes off as kind of menacing in this. Uh, so I don't want to get, like I said, I, I don't want to venture into spoiler territory too much. Suffice to say, there are moments where he uh, acts creepy. And... There is clearly something going on with the kid. The kid is uh, lives with his parents in this house that's a little bit beaten up. And a week before Halloween is where this movie starts. And I'm so glad I watched it for this year because it's got real uh, great Halloween vibes. And uh, the week before Halloween, uh, at school, he is being harassed by a bully and... There is a new substitute teacher who's going to be there for a while, uh, who is uh, played by Cleopatra Coleman, uh, who you may know from uh, Infinity Pool. She was in that. Uh, she was in Dope Sick, which uh, I really like. Dope Sick, I think, is a real good series. Uh, she was in Last Man on Earth from, you know, several years ago. So she's been around, but... Uh, she is the substitute teacher who starts to suspect that maybe something is going on at home with Peter. That uh, something with Peter and his parents is not totally kosher. And kosher uh, it is not because Peter is having nightmares that are waking his parents up. And at first his parents seem like typical, normal, loving parents. But in very short order, and by short order I mean within the first 15 minutes of the movie you realize they may not be all that they seem to be. Also, if that's not bad enough, there uh, is a voice coming from the wall that wants to talk to Peter. 
this like little girl's voice that's like, Peter, Peter, we should hang out. Uh, and telling him what he ought to be doing with himself and how to behave and how to take care of the bullies at school and things like that. So that is sort of the world that you were dropped into. And, and I do think that it does create a world. That's one of the things that I really like about Cobweb is it feels very much like a, a fairy tale that you've never heard before. And everything is really big. The house is big on the inside. There's a lot of empty space. Uh, one, there's a shot of the parents' bedroom when uh, Peter is going in to, you know, talk about his nightmare. And the parents' bed is pushed against the wall on one side, on like the left side of the frame. And then there's just nothing in the right side of the frame, all the way to the other wall. And it's just this enormous space. When you see the house from the outside, the exterior shots, it's clearly like a TARDIS situation where when you go in, everything is 10 times bigger than how it looks on the outside. But I really like that. Not only is it bigger on the outside, there's all kinds of trap doors and, and, and whatnot. There's, I'm trying to think of a movie to compare it to, and there's not a great comparison, which speaks very well of the movie, right? Like the fact that there isn't a movie that immediately springs to mind. And the ones that do are things like, People under the stairs, but that's not a great comparison because the points of comparison are, are fairly random. You know, it is not that kind of movie necessarily where uh, the, all of the action is taking place inside the walls and that kind of thing. It's really not like that. Um, and it, like I said, it, it, it does read as if this is kind of a fairy tale that it is from very much Peter's point of view, from his uh, his perspective, and let's talk about, briefly about the Halloween trappings of this thing. So apparently, his parents are growing pumpkins in the yard, so the whole yard is just filled with pumpkins. So when you look at the house, you're seeing this old, somewhat battered you know, wooden home with pumpkins all over the side yard, some of which are rotted and, and bashed in. And there's Halloween stuff going on at school. And Peter is carrying a jack-o'-lantern around and there are Halloween decorations on the porch and the big finale takes place on Halloween. It is a fantastic Halloween movie. So I'm, like I said, I'm glad I saw it when I did in the lead up to the Halloween season. Then let's really get into it without, again, getting into spoilers because I want you to be as, as fresh as I was. And I don't want to oversell this because Cobweb, it, it's very subdued until it's not. But it's mostly this kind of slow burn sort of movie. But even though it's a slow burn, it's still incredibly creepy. For the first time in a long time, ladies and jelly spoons, I was in my chair watching this movie and I was starting to get a little freaked out. And because there are a couple of things that happen in the movie, one early on and one later, once we get into Act Three proper, that are two moments that I thought to myself, well, that's just horrifying. That's like, that's really unsettling to me. Like I'm genuinely getting, uh, scared by this movie. I, you know, I wasn't like running around the house, turning on lights, but I definitely felt my skin start to crawl and my heart race. Uh, I, I was really, really into it. And it's been so long since I watched a movie that scared me. I was so happy you guys. I love it when a movie can still scare me because it, it lets me know that I'm not dead yet. Uh, yeah, it, it freaked me out. I really liked, and not every single moment, and I think the movie has its flaws. Uh, I think that sort of the reveal of the main antagonist isn't perfect. And th like this is me nit like really nitpicking this movie now. There are things about the presentation of that character that I'm not as crazy about, 
But with that said, there are also things about the prote- the antagonist of the movie, not the protagonist, that would be uh, Peter. Uh, the antagonist of the movie that I find like chilling and, and it's just the right decision by the filmmakers. The production design is incredible and it all lends uh, itself to this really eerie atmosphere. And I like jump scares are fine, right? Jump scares are, are you know, it, it, that I, as I've said before, is kind of a math problem. If you set up the, the scene just right and you give it enough space to breathe and then you do the music sting right and the visuals right, then you can get that jump scare. And it's, uh, you know, there are some moving parts to it, but it's math. It, it, there, there is a science to a jump scare. The kind of dread that I felt watching Cobweb is the kind of scared I love to be, which is that kind of scared that is not about the the science or the math of it, but rather this is a thing that hits me in that, you know, lizard part of the brain of this isn't right. There's an uncanniness to it that really bothered me. And I loved it. I loved being bothered by this movie. It, Like I said, it made me so incredibly happy to watch a movie that I'd never seen before this Halloween that scared me. And I can only hope that it has the same effect on you. Uh, I would... I don't like I said I don't want to oversell it because I don't want to be one of those people that's like the scariest movie in the past twenty years has arrived, and then you see it and you're like, what the fuck is the fuss about? Don't go into this with super high expectations because, like I said, it's an imperfect movie. There are things about it that I would probably change if I could, uh, or or certainly didn't land with me the same way that other bits did. But there are enough pieces of this movie that I think are just dead on. And, and it's quiet. It's a quiet little movie for the most part. Things get a little more buck wild in the third act. But, it you know, don't go into it expecting like a big budget Hollywood kind of scare film like Insidious or The Conjuring or something like that. This feels like an indie movie. It feels like something that uh, somebody who really enjoyed a good, creepy sort of haunted house movie, it, it, and which is kind of what it is, sort of that somebody who knew how to make one of those in a way that was effective and entertaining and fun and scary and all of those things. And I just had a ball with this movie and it's only 90 minutes. Again, what I've been saying this whole 31 days of Halloween, there is a perfect length for a horror film and it's about 90 minutes. And this movie comes in at like 92 and it's ideal. It is absolutely perfect. You're, you know, conflicted about Peter because Peter does some fucked up stuff along the way, uh, you know, being a little kid and just making some bad decisions and you're with him, but you're also like, you're worried about him because there are such big forces around him that are, are swirling and making it difficult for him to be happy. And he's a little kid and you want to be safe and protected. But also there are some moments where you're like, oh man, you fucked up. Uh, you fucked up so bad here. And that's really fun, and uh, and it's not super gory, but there are moments that are kind of gory, which is fun to see in a movie like this. It, it yeah, it it just made me happy, and I at the risk of even underselling it, I just don't want anyone to go into this expecting a movie that is just going to be screeching violins and blowing the doors off. And, you know, shit flying around a room and somebody like clutching a crucifix and screaming at the demons to to be gone. I'm thinking of that Conjuring 2 finale where it's, you know, it's like 9-11 in spectral form happening inside this bedroom. And it's not that kind of movie. It's a, a much quieter film. It's not necessarily more thoughtful because even though this movie, I think, has some interesting things to say about childhood trauma... For the most part, it is just a spooky story. And that is also one of the things that I deeply, deeply love about this movie. It's definitely on my top 10 list this year. I can tell you that unreservedly right now. I really enjoyed Cobweb. It's available on Hulu during Halloween. So if you haven't seen it yet, 
please, please, please get out there. Give it a, a watch. I think you're really going to like it. And uh, and I don't want to say any more. Just go see it. Go, jump in the Discord after you've seen it and let me know what you thought because uh, I'm, I'm really uh, quite fond of this movie. And I, I would love for um, all of you to, you know, sort of uh, jump on board with it. And yeah, I, I think it's going to be a very... Uh, a, a very good time for you if you give it a chance. So anyway, that's it for today. We'll be back tomorrow. Believe it or not, the last three movies are ahead of us. Uh, three more to go uh, before the end of this 31 Days of Halloween. Man, I can't believe it has happened so quickly, but here we are. So uh, I thank you so much for joining me and come back tomorrow for the last three movies in our uh, spooky series of the 31 Days of Halloween. See you then. Mm-hmm.